So in the last few videos, we've been talking about two level systems. And we've been trying to figure out uh, if I have a, a two level system or I have an energy level E2 and an energy level E1, and an electron is initially occupying this state, so this st state E1, and then I apply some light uh, with a certain frequency and a certain electric field. Uh, what happens to this electron? So how does it evolve with time? In particular, how does its wave function evolve with time? Uh, so if this is the wave function just for this state, how does the total wave function, uh, which is the wave function from this state and this state, some linear combination of the two, how does this evolve? And so we came up with a gross differential equation. Uh, like, I mean gross as in disgusting. Uh, in the last video, which looks something like this. And I, I'm going to rearrange it a little bit to try and make it a little more clear. Uh, so on the left-hand side, we've got IH bar uh, and the coefficients, uh, so C1 and C2, or their time derivatives, I omega 1, T. And then uh, I'm going to draw the wave functions and the functions, all the functions of space, so all the functions of X, uh, in red, so we can separate out those out from the functions of time. Uh, so plus the same exact thing, uh, but for coefficient two, e to the minus i omega two t uh, times psi two, and we said that this was all equal to uh, c one e to the minus i omega one t times this perturbing Hamiltonian h prime, uh, and we calculated h prime. We actually have an expression for it. Uh, it's just equal to Q, the uh, electric uh, electric charge constant, uh, times the electric field applied, E naught, uh, times X, just the X variable, uh, times cosine of omega T, where omega is the frequency of our incoming light. So we could call that omega LT if we wanted to. Uh, so this is H prime psi 1 plus uh, C2, so same exact thing for C2, e to the minus i omega 2t uh, h prime psi 2. Oh, I'm sorry, this should be a, a psi 2 over here as well. And so now, if you've watched the previous videos, you know that in order to simplify this, in order to make this tractable, uh, we want to take the inner product of this whole thing, so of both sides, let's call that f, uh, with psi 1, and we also want to take the inner product of f with psi 2. And these will give us two different equations that uh, are in terms of c1, c2, and their derivatives, which are fairly uncoupled from each other, and we can sort of go from there. So at this point, I recommend you try taking the inner products yourself just to get some practice with it. And if you get stuck on the inner products with these guys, uh, you can just leave them as is. That's fine. And so now let's actually do this. Let's take the inner product. So if we take first the inner product with respect to psi 1, so we take this whole expression uh, inner product with respect to psi 1, let's initially start with this term on the very, very left-hand side. So if we take the inner product with, uh, with respect to this thing, we can pull out front, uh, so we can pull out everything that's not a function of x, and we're left just taking the inner product of psi 1 with psi 1. And we know that that's just equal to 1. Uh, so this, uh, we can effectively cancel this, so this just becomes 1. Uh, similarly, for this second term, we can pull out all these functions of time out front, and we just need to take the inner product of psi 1 with psi 2. And we know that since these uh, functions are orthogonal, which I haven't proved, I've sort of just stated as a matter of fact, uh, but you can prove it with a little bit of quantum mechanics, uh, that this is equal to zero. And so this whole term goes away, and thank goodness, because uh, this we don't need any more of these monsters roaming around uh, than absolutely necessary. So what about this third term? Uh, so this first term on the right-hand side, well, we can pull out all the functions of time, and then we want to take the inner product with psi 1 and h prime psi 1. And we actually have a, a, a function or a, a description of what h prime actually is. We can write it down. Uh, and so let's, let's do that right now. Uh, what we actually want to take the inner product with is psi 1 and h prime, which is q e naught cosine of omega t 
times x, and then this is multiplied by psi 1. And so uh, you're probably seeing what's coming. Uh, we can pull this out front, and we just need to take the inner product of psi 1 and x times psi 1. Now here we're going to use some, uh, some physical chemistry knowledge. So some, uh, if you've ever taken pchem, uh, then you, you might know that these wave functions, even if we don't know much about them, at least for the hydrogen atom, uh, they're going to be either even or they're going to be odd. So they're, uh, they're going to be even or odd functions of x. So either psi 1 of uh, minus x is equal to psi of x, or psi 1 of minus x is equal to minus psi 1 of x. So odd, even. And x itself is an odd function. And so if we are doing the integral, uh, so from minus infinity to infinity, of an odd function, which is x, uh, times an either odd or, well, first let's say an even function. So an even function, psi of x. Uh, times another even function, psi of x, or technically psi conjugate. Um, we know the product of these of two even functions is an even function, and an odd function times an even function is an odd function. So we're integrating an odd function uh, from minus infinity to infinity, and this integral uh, must be zero. Now this isn't super rigorous, but uh, you you should also know that psi one generally decays, uh, so psi one approaches zero, uh, approaches zero as x approaches infinity. So this is a valid argument in in that case. So the end result of that is that this whole term is gone, which is great. Now we only have to deal with two terms. So now we need to figure out what's the inner product of this guy, and this will turn out to be the most formidable uh, by far. So we need to take the inner product of psi one with uh, c, what was this, c2, I think? Yeah, c2, uh, c2 e to the minus i omega 2t uh, times, well, let's just add in the Hamiltonian, q e naught uh, cosine omega t times psi two, or times x, uh, times x, times psi 2. And we can just pull all this white stuff out front, and we're left doing taking the inner product of psi 1 with x and psi 2. But at this point, we are actually kind of stuck. Uh, so we are actually kind of stuck. We don't actually know, uh, or we can't figure out, without knowing more about psi 1 and psi 2, we can't figure out what this inner product is. So we can't make an even odd argument. We can't make a symmetry argument. We can't make any, we can't do any other sort of mathematical trickery. Uh, so we sort of just have to leave this as is. So we're gonna leave it as is. And we're gonna say, well, uh, and this will just give you a, a sense of what's to come. Other people have actually figured out ways to calculate this. So uh, using more advanced physics, than uh, I'll go into here, uh, and more advanced physics than I understand at this point, frankly, uh, people are able to calculate a number. Essentially, this is a number with some units associated with it. And so people have calculated these and tabulated them for various materials. And so you can figure out uh, what this is. Uh, it, it is. It is a known quantity, but we're just going to leave it like this uh, for, the, for the foreseeable future. And this is what's known as a matrix element. So people have come up with fancy names for it because it is so difficult to deal with. Uh, and specifically, this is the dipole. This is called the dipole matrix element. Uh, a common trend you'll notice in physics is that when things become too difficult to deal with, uh, we just give them another name and then study them on their own. <laughs> and then we sort of introduce them back once we've figured out what we're, what we're doing. So okay, after all of that work, uh, let's let's rewrite our final equation. So it's just this term on the left-hand side, and this term on the right-hand side with our uh, our dipole matrix element. So our final equation uh, is I h bar dc one dt. This is what we have on the left-hand side, 
i omega one t that should be a one not a two i said one but root two interesting uh this is all equal to what did we have above uh c2 e to the minus i omega 2t c2 e to the minus i omega 2t times q e naught cosine of omega t multiplied by our dipole matrix element so psi 1 times x psi 2 this is our final answer and if you uh if you work this if you work this out by taking the inner product instead with psi 2 uh so take the inner product uh of well take the inner product of psi 2 and this entire function then you'll get a similar equation which basically you just swap c1 and c2 omega 1 and omega 2 uh dc2 dt e to the minus i omega 2t is equal to c1 e to the minus i omega 1t q e naught cosine of omega and let's call this omega l for omega light uh so the light that we're applying uh multiplied by a different matrix element which is actually sort of the same thing uh psi 2 with x times psi 1 this is actually the complex conjugate of of this but we'll we'll go into that later and so we've now got two equations uh so we've got two equations and if you uh are willing to believe that we can figure out a value for this matrix element that it's just some uh, it's just some function of not of X, but maybe of Omega light. Uh, we don't we don't really know uh, But let's assume that this is known So let's assume that this is known Then we've got two equations and two unknowns and our unknowns are C1 and C2 and these are specifically differential equations so they're differential equations and in order to solve them we need a set of initial values so we need a set of initial values and that will be the subject of the next video but remember uh, that we initially assumed that we had an electron so we had an electron just in state one and we're interested in seeing what happens as the system evolves so we know that c1 at time zero is equal to one and c2 at time zero is equal to zero and so this will be the subject of future videos and actually solving these differential equations. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, also please post those down below and I'll try to get back to you as quickly as I can. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.